The worst thing is to get involved with people who aren't passionate about what they're doing. I never act. I simply bring out the real animal that's in me. I think on some level, you do your best things when you're a little off balance, a little scared. You've got to work from mystery, from wonder, from not knowing. There's a real wisdom to not saying a thing. Turn off the sound in a movie, and if you can tell what's going on, the movie should work. Performing is about developing empathy, which leads us to a broader view of the world and encourages us to develop compassion so we can comfort each other and not be so brutal with each other. Great theater is about challenging how we think and encouraging us to fantasize about a world we aspire to. I'm learning in my old age that the only thing you can do to keep your sanity is to stay in the moment. I set myself challenges every time I work. Ideally, I approach everything as though it's the first time with a beginner's mind and an amateur's love. Action breeds inspiration more than inspiration breeds action. When you have something to work with, then you fly with it. I guess they often cast me as the bad guy because I'm not or conventional looking. I look sort of violent. I'm the odd one out, the outsider. I'm not attracted to naturalism. I'm not attracted to behavior. I'm attracted to dance. I'm attracted to gesture. I'm attracted to singing with your voice as opposed to having a natural manner. I'm a theater actor first, so that probably influences a lot of my approach. And I think in many ways, naturalism has ruined movies. Weirdness is not my game. I'm just a square boy from Wisconsin. One of the pleasures of being an actor is quite simply taking a walk in someone else's shoes. And when I look at the roles I've played, I'm kind of amazed at all the wonderful adventures I've had and the different things I've learned. I don't think people want to see me as a regular guy. Besides, I'm a regular guy in real life. I guess I just want to be reckless in my work. Sometimes I think women are lucky because they can develop in ways men can't. The old boy network may be oppressive to women, but it actually stunts men in terms of personal growth. I've never had any close male friends. The most important relationships in my life have always been with women. Film is fragmented and gets into lots of other people's hands. There are a lot of pleasures that theater gives me. You get to perform uninterrupted. You can be intuitive when you've got a more expansive role. You can get into the poetry of telling the story rather than just pushing buttons. I'm no different to anyone else. I want people to like me. I just don't particularly want them to understand me. The truth is, if you're around long enough, you have a story about everyone. But it's best to keep your mouth shut sometimes. When I was a kid, I was very interested in the idea of the will, finding out what you're capable of. I like those kind of challenges. I was born William. My father was William. I came from a big family. I hated being called Billy. Willem's a nickname. It's a Dutch name, very common in the Netherlands. I want to work with people who are good at what they do and people who are passionate. As you get older, you suffer fools less easily. That's why there's all those cranky character actors. I'm an exception. I'm a sweetheart. I try to attach myself to people who really inspire me and directors who are really passionate. That way, I can give myself more fully and trust the impulse behind why the film is being made and I can be a little more irresponsible in finding out what the character is. The best thing an actor can be is ready. Be flexible, be ready. I'm one of those people who when I go over a bridge, I want to jump. It's just this intense tickle in the back of my throat. It's like I'm on the verge the whole time I'm walking over that bridge and I'm not going to get a release until I jump. The mask can be a limitation, but you just deal with it. You do get superhuman strength and pumpkin bombs and all this other stuff to express yourself with. I was doing community theater and I was always interested in acting, but I was also interested in sports. I was interested in a lot of things. I was a pretty normal guy. I wasn't like a guy who grew up in a dark theater watching movies. The real difficulty for smaller films, when they're made independently and it's time to go for a distributor, sometimes if it's a tough film and the people who financed it need their money back right away, it's much easier and lucrative to take a DVD deal. It makes me laugh when I hear a guy talking about being in touch with his feminine side. 
but I gravitate towards women. I identify with them. And I do cry very easily, more and more as I get older. I love Sam Neill. The thing that I always say about him, and I think it's true, is he's so dry. When he's serious, I think he's joking. When he's joking, I think he's serious. It's nice to go back with people that you already trust. I'm an optimist. I hope if a movie's good that it will be a success, but that's not always true, just because of popular taste or any other reasons. When something doesn't do better than it deserves to in your mind, it's pretty transparent, you usually know why. Is that a comfort? Yes, because it's logical. Does it make you happy? No, because if you think a movie is beautiful or interesting, you want to share it. Sometimes you make very interesting movies that aren't meant for everybody. But this is a capitalist society, so everything conspires to put value on whether it sells or not. If you know what it is before you even start, it's not as interesting. Central to being an actor is pretending, and the adventure of it all. That's why you become a junkie for different kinds of situations. I try to attach myself to people who really inspire me, and directors who are really passionate. That way, I can give myself more fully and trust the impulse behind why the film is being made, and I can be a little more irresponsible in finding out what the character is. I have to worry less about what the character means if I trust the director. I don't have a preference between theater and film, I like to do both. But I will say that there's something about theater that is more nourishing and sustaining than film ever can be. I don't want people to know anything about me, because that's not important. I'm more interested in the me that takes shape through the characters. I am confident only when I am constantly in motion. Between projects, the doubt creeps in. If you get stuck and it feels a little stiff, then you do have to mess it up to find it. But other times, it's really written and you just stick to your guns and do it as elegantly and as concentrated and as committed as you can. Sometimes you're wrong, but if I'm a repeat customer, it means I must have valued the past experiences. All the time, as an actor, you want to be asking what's next and where things are going. If you're not asking those questions, you are not growing. For every role, you have to always find a different way to approach it, one that's specific and suits what the key is. Every role's a mystery. I think if you know what it is, you probably shouldn't even do it. I wish to Christ I could make up a really great lie. Sometimes, after an interview, I say to myself, Man, you were so honest, can't you have some fun? Can't you do some really down and dirty lying? But the Puritan in me thinks that if I tell a lie, I'll be punished. I think, as I've gotten older, I've been able to be more reckless with my choices, because practically speaking, you get less careful. Your choices become more instinctive, and you feel like if you make a mistake, it won't destroy you. I love theaters. I love the event of going there and seeing a movie with a lot of people. I like the community coming around the story. I feel like it's important to be flexible, particularly when I'm coming in late in the game and I'm connective tissue in the story. I'm not at the very center. It's important for me to have a certain kind of flexibility and try to help people do what they need to do. I'm a task-oriented actor. A pretender. And I try to invent my process anew each time I make a new project. So I frown on any method. I'm never in Hollywood. I'm a theater actor that lives in New York. I'm very seldom in Los Angeles. I don't dislike LA, I just don't think it's a very healthy place for me to be all the time. When I'm shooting a movie there and am working I'm perfectly happy. But when I'm not working or engaged in something it's a place that I wouldn't live. I like the idea of sitting in a theater with a bunch of people. With technology now, people are getting more and more isolated. I like the community coming around the story. You don't have that with a DVD. People go home, they're tired from work, they can turn it off. It doesn't make you commit the same way if you can control the movie. More difficult movies, it's too easy to turn them off. All the time, I see movies I know if I had seen it on DVD, I wouldn't have hung with it. If you see it on the screen, you hang with it and it pays off better than a movie you can easily sit through on DVD. I have some sort of affinity for compulsive behavior. 
the most interesting stories come up from the people on the outside. A lot of critics are lazy. They don't want to look closely and analyze something for what it is. They take a quick first impression and then rush to compare it to something they've seen before. Any actor who tells you that he makes choices, absolutely, is wrong. You find work and work finds you. The Midwest isn't somewhere you mix with those from the performing arts. But my mom and dad would go off to Chicago every so often to see shows. They would bring back the albums and the movies, those little eight meters, and we would all watch. I think that was when I fell in love with acting. When I give over to somebody's vision rather than have an idea of what I need to do, it takes me to places I wouldn't have got to buy myself. I'm always attracted to a strong director. I prefer shooting on location, just because it always helps you. You go someplace, you put your life on hold even more than when you've settled in some place. You can make a new life so it opens yourself up to the make-believe and the imagination in a way when you aren't burdened by things that remind you of your life all the time. I pride myself on being fairly polite on a set so it's kind of a guilty pleasure to poke others on the set. The truth is I like the crazy ones better than the well-behaved ones normally because they tend to be the passionate ones. They never come after you if you're holding up your end. The only thing that's bad about an abusive director is that they bully the people they can. Mounting those red stairs is something I've done with a very different intention many times. So it's interesting anytime you witness those shifts of perspective. The beach scenes were also fun. It felt very strange and very theatrical to kind of commandeer it and have La Mer booming over the speakers. Sometimes you make very interesting movies that aren't meant for everybody. But this is a capitalist society, so everything conspires to put value on whether it sells or not. In my experience, sometimes a movie just hits at the wrong time, gets the wrong press, or gets the wrong representation, and it gets misunderstood. I'll never be able to really see a film that I'm in. With theater, you have to be ready for anything. It's no fun for an actor to keep repeating what you did before. It's always changing. I'm changing. The target keeps moving. That's the beauty of it. It's true in the beginning I started playing villains, and I think that's pretty clear, because if you don't conventionally look a certain way and you've got a certain kind of presence when you're young, then what's available to you is character roles, and the best character roles when you're young tend to be villains. In films you do a scene, you play around with it and unless you're doing a lot of reshooting, which no one has the luxury to do, you deal with the problem for a day and then you move on. On some level, it never allows you to go very deep into what performing is about. I'm an optimist. I hope if a movie's good that it will be a success, but as we know, that's not always true. Just because of popular taste, advertising, distribution patterns, there's lots of reasons. I love doing action and stuff. The problem is usually action movies are not that interesting. Also, as I get older, I feel like there's less opportunities for me. My dad was a surgeon, my mom a nurse, and they were always out working. I had five sisters and a brother. They didn't care what I got up to. My dad was a surgeon, my mom a nurse, and they were always out working. I had five sisters and a brother. They didn't care what I got up to. The bad things about theater get balanced by the good things in film and vice versa. So to tell you the truth, I love it when I can go back and forth, it feeds different parts of you and exercises different muscles. The director is very important to me, particularly when the director has a recognizable style. When you work on anything, you want to find the range of impulses, which ones get portrayed is another question, but you want to have that complexity and that fullness, even if you're playing a cartoon character. Plenty of bad movies are very successful, and plenty of good movies are not. And distribution is so crazy, some films won't even get their day in court. The English Patient is about the coming together of a French-Canadian nurse, an English patient, a Sikh in a turban and me, Caravaggio, and each of us is seeking a resolution to our own problems.